What's going on guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. What a beautiful day it is today. You know why? Because we're alive. So man, whatever you're at, man, enjoy the journey. Enjoy where you're at, enjoy growing. We need to be the best that we can be, not only in this game, but also in life. I believe in you guys, man. I say it every single day, so keep going. What I absolutely love about Fortnite is how many different ways there are to win. You know why? Because you could be a fantastic aimer and succeed by just ripping headshots, right? Or you could just be an expert builder and get a dub through that. But in my opinion, there's nothing quite like seeing somebody win by just making a smart play. Problem is, those are really, really hard to come by. So today, we're gonna to be going over four strategies that you can use to play smarter in season two. These strats are not only gonna help you win fights, but they're also gonna help you do better and understand the metagame and how to set yourself up for victory. Something overlooked way, way, way too often. All right, guys, so before we get into today's video, we gotta do the question of the day. Which of these do you think matters the most in Fortnite? Aiming? building or game sense? I don't really think there's going to be like a clear cut answer, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below. So if you wanna learn even more about getting better at Fortnite, you gotta check out ProGuides.com. So we've got courses, videos, and live coaching available from top players. So be sure to like and subscribe before we begin, then follow the link in the description to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. I get so excited during these times. It's time to sit back. Come on, stay with me. Relax and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch. And we got to get this going. All right, guys. So mythic items, obviously, you know, they're all really, really powerful, especially the grappler, you know, drum gun and minigun. But, you know, the only issue behind getting them is the fight that you got to go through. So there are always, you know, at least a few players landing at each spot. You can find mythic items, right? And those hectic early games can be extremely difficult to survive. But what if I told you, you know, there was a great way to get those shiny new items without having to deal with those grueling early games? Who wants to know? Sounds too good to be true, huh? But you can do it by using the flank strategy. So let me tell you this. The flank strategy is when you land right at the outskirts of a popular landing spot, loot up, then make your way toward the desired POI. So you can either lie and wait for an ambush or just sneak your way through and force a fight. But the whole point of this, guys, is just to give yourself an advantage over the players that landed there. So what advantages? Hmm. Well, first, your opponents might already be engaged in a fight. If they are, then you can just easily third party and just mop the floor with them, right? Second, you know, they may be low on mats and health after fighting off every single player that landed there, which makes for an equally simple cleanup. And third, they're not going to be expecting players. So, you know, they're going to have their guard down, which should allow you to get the drop in pretty much every instance. So, for example, you can land at the gas station east of the agency and just loot up the chest there. Then head west and just gather loot at the cabin. So by the time you're done, you should be able to make your way over to the agency and just wreak havoc on whoever's still alive. If your timing is lucky, you might even catch your opponents while they're opening the vault. Who knows? So another strat that we're seeing involves abusing those exit portals. Okay, so since every vault, except for the agency, has an exit portal leading only to one spot, so if you cap that spot right, it can lead to the easiest kills of your entire life. Like seriously, especially if you use C4. That strategy is straight up busted and you know honestly makes me panic a little every single time I hop inside one of those porta potties. Obviously not everybody takes the exit portal, so you also have to be on the lookout in case they rotate on foot. Overall, you know, the flank strat is a classic, man. You know, it's been around since pretty much the beginning, but got super prevalent during Season X. So Retail Row had a ton of fantastic loot that you could get. So players would land at the factories and, you know, pull off pretty much the same maneuver. So give it a try, guys, in your games and just let me know how it goes. All right, guys. So next thing we want to talk about is the fake base strategy. All right. So not the strat that you might know from Faze Martos. His was a bit different and involved setting like a literal bait to lure in opponents, which, you know, when we talk about, you know, fake bases here, we mean additional one by ones you can construct to give the illusion of, you know, more players in an area. OK, so let's just say that you want to camp out on a hill, right? You can set up just one base and just sit inside it. But anyone passing by is instantly going to know you're alone. However, if you set up an extra one as well, like a decoy base, if you will, you know, it'll seem as if there are two players and to everyone passing by, there's a much more significant threat, right? So passive players are going to look for somewhere more secluded and aggressive players are going to think twice before pushing. So because of the whole, you know, third party thing, of course, right? So fake bases help keep opponents away. 
And that's something like very, very critical, especially in high level matches when, you know, games are stacked. There's only so much real estate available once, you know, the mid game starts. And then, you know, you want the area you're going to be in as clear as possible, mainly so you can have an easier time rotating, right? There are going to be fewer players you can, you know, potentially run into, which makes the whole going to the next zone thing a lot more straightforward. So you can even use fake bases as a way to like get the jump on aggressive players. Some guys can't even help themselves, right? They just love the W key all the time. So say for instance that you have one of those big bushes available to camp in, right? Why not just like spend a few mats setting up a fake base nearby, then just hide in the bush? Hmm. If they're not too smart, which you know, most players are not, <laughs> they're going to get drawn by the base looking for a kill. And that's when you can lay in a clean beam to just push for the kill. So when would you use the fake base strategy? Good question. OK, well, if it's safe and you think that you have the opportunity to farm up more materials, you could just set one up. You know, a more optimal time is like usually like right after you get a kill. Let's say that you get a frag like around circle four. You didn't use any materials and neither did your opponent. So now you have a bunch like a bunch of crunch <laughs> of extra material just sitting there, right? Well, if you're in zone and you're happy to box up right there, you could just throw up a fake base, perhaps even two and then head back to refill your mats. You know, all in all, you know, the fake base is a genius strategy, guys, <laughs> like with barely any cause that can do wonders in keeping enemies away and just setting up for the win. All right, guys. So next up, I want to talk about one item players seem to be struggling to deal with, you know, quite a bit in this season. All right. I'm talking about remote explosives, a.k.a. C4. So you can carry a bunch of them like and they'll blow everything up. And a few of them are enough to obliterate anybody that even tries to turtle. <laughs> no wonder going up against it feels really, really hopeless. Still, though, there's got to be a way to put up a better fight, right? Well, C4 is pretty much like intended as a direct counter to turtling. And that's what it was when it was released. And, you know, even though it's gotten nerfed several times since then, it's still here for that purpose. You know, it's a way to punish players that sit inside their boxes holding turbo build. So now, guys, let's think about C4's weaknesses. All right, here we go. So one, you know, it's short range, right? On a flat surface, C4 can be thrown around up to 30 meters away, about, you know, six floor pieces. With a bit of height, it can go a tiny bit further. But compared to like grenades or anything else, really, I mean, you really can't send them really far. Another is it's setup time. All right, so tossing two or three C4 up close only takes like a couple seconds, but if they're further away, there's extra travel time, right? Which only lengthens the process. And third is chain reaction. C4 doesn't explode all at one time. Instead, the first one basically placed blows up first and then the second one and all the way to the most recent one. So one ancient strategy to counter C4 involves hiding under cones and just turbo building them, right? So the building speed is high enough to completely just negate all C4 damage, but it does leave you guys in a vulnerable position and it really doesn't work unless you're on a flat surface with no open gaps. So while it can work, it's really not that ideal. All right, so what else can you do? Not really a whole lot, but you know, if we look back at the weaknesses, it just seems as if two things are really, really crucial, creating distance and staying on the move. So anytime, all right, you hear C4 kit, you know, plop down on your structures, edit out of your box and tunnel away from your opponent toward like the opposite of their position, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, a full tunnel or anything like that, just enough to block off your opponent's angles. So, you know, you want to always be on the move so you can just avoid a stack of C4. At most, one might blow up your bills, which would be horrible, <laughs> but you should be able to quickly just place more and just get back on the move. All right, guys, so don't be the type of player that just stands there turbo booting against C4, man. You've got to move, but, you know, making yourself an easy to hit target is pretty much like asking for it, right? So edit out of your box, gain some distance, expand your builds, and then you're going to become significantly harder to hit. All right, guys, so finally, I want to go over the most underrated aspects of rotations, avoiding the congested side of the safe zone. You know, I feel like 90% of us don't even think about this when we play. So we just like white line into the next circle, putting really no thought into how many players are doing the same thing. And of course, you know, that means a higher chance of just running into opponents, which can hurt the chances of making it to the end game. So if you're playing to survive, you definitely want to stay away from the congested side at all costs. All right, guys, so what is congestion? Hmm. Well, it's what your doctor <laughs> might call like the stuffy nose that lets you stay home. Yeah. But in Fortnite, it refers to the overpopulated areas of the safe zones. And the thing is, you know, by understanding typical player behavior and how circles form, you know, we can just quickly pinpoint the congested and uncongested sections. 
Okay, example time. Let's just say that the first save zone forms over the southeast part of the island. Once the storm approaches and all the players that landed outside of it are gonna have to rotate in. So everyone from like Sweaty Sands, Pleasant Park, Slurpee Swamp, and so on. So that means, you know, they're gonna be an influx of players coming in on the north and west edges of the circle, the congested side, right? Therefore, the less crowded side is going to be the furthest away from there, near the south and east edges, of course. And that's pretty much like the process you go through to find out where the less congested side is. You know, you can use this throughout the rest of the game too, pretty much like until the end of the match. So pinpoint the side that has the fewest amount of players rotating in and just head toward that. So avoiding the congested side guys isn't like a new concept or anything like that. In fact, you know, I think it's been around even before Fortnite was even a thing. You know, other like Battle Royale games have the safe zone concept as well. So it's not like a groundbreaking trick or anything like that. Still, you know, a majority of players don't even consider it while playing, but they totally should. And you know, so should you. While everyone's stuck on the congested side because, you know, they didn't think to avoid it, you're gonna be riding an easy street all the way to victory. All right guys, so we're gonna do a recap. You guys ready? Let's do it. So mythic items are highly contested, but if you can flank as the circle closes, you can usually find an easy kill or two and keep all the loot to yourself. All right, next thing up. So throwing up a fake base every now and then can keep your opponents off your back, which is a vital way to survive until the end game. So standing still is the worst thing that you can do against C4. Always try to like stay on the move. Tunnel if you even have to, all right? Run away from whoever's tossing it. You gotta be proactive. Don't expect turtling to save you though. And you know, if you pay attention to where more players are rotating in from, then you can avoid the congested sides of the zone and play the opposite. That'll mean, you know, running into fewer players and an easier time reaching the end game. But other than all of that, you know, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Once again, this is your motivation guy. All right, so please give a like to the video, subscribe. We just appreciate all of our subs. We really, really, really do. And once again, we'll see you again next time.